Hello friends, I am Avin Arun Dizavi and today we are going to study the MATLAB code for the analysis of laminated composite plates based on quasi three dimensional theory. So today we will have the MATLAB code for this quasi three dimensional theory. In the last few lectures we have studied the classical laminated plate theory, MATLAB code for that. And then we, for the first order shear deformation theory, we have written the MATLAB code. And thereafter, we have done further it is high order shear deformation theory. We have written the MATLAB code. And today, we will see about the quasi three dimensional theory. So, just a brief review for that. So, let's see what are the unknowns here. So, u of xyz is u naught of xy minus z times del w naught by del x plus f of z del phi by del x. Similarly, v of xyz is v naught x y minus z times del w naught by del y plus f z del phi by del y. And w of x y z is w naught of x y plus g of z phi of x y. So here, from last uh, dif, uh, last theories, this is different. What is different that at this point, w of x y z, which is a transverse displacement, is a function of w naught of x y mid plane x y function plus it is also a function g z. Yani that g is a function of z. So therefore, along the thickness of the plate, it is not a constant, but it will vary. Okay, so there would be the variations. So we can see from here the variation, which would be carried out by the g functions. Okay, and uh, now the number of unknowns we can see from here: u naught, v naught, w naught. Okay, three and uh, phi is four. So there are total four number of unknowns. Uh, but, whereas in the last few lectures we have studied the first order shear deformation theory and radius third order shear deformation theory, they were containing five unknowns, but they were not showing the transverse displacement variation. Means That means the stretching part was absent there. So the sigma zz was not available. Whereas in this lecture, we can understand from this four unknowns only, we can get a better results and also in the transverse stretching portion, we will get from here. So the transverse displacement would not be a constant, but there would be the variation. So here it, it is shown that this result was plotted and where it is showing that the transverse displacement is varying. Okay, This, is, this result is for the uh, quasi three dimensional theory, whereas this red line, bold line is for the exact three dimensional theory. Okay. So now we will go to the MATLAB and we will start our code. So let's start. Okay. So this is our MATLAB code. So we will just see for the quasi three dimensional theory. We have written the code where input required, load parameters, material parameters, everything is same. We will give the input total height and then we will assign the coordinates here. Then the FZ function we have written. Then this is the laminate coordinates. Then the material properties we have assigned here. Then the orientation of the layer that number of lamina how much we provide 4, 5, 6, 10. So accordingly, what would be the orientation of each lamina we will provide there. From there, we will get the matrix. A matrix, B matrix and all. Then finally, we will get a J matrix and then we will get the load vector. So where uh, we will have the sinusoidal distributed load. So Q0 we have already assigned. So it would be there. Then we will get the deflection. So that will be inverse of J matrix into load vector. That would give us the all four unknowns, UMN, VMN, WMN, and PIMN. So we will get all the four unknowns. From this, we will get the displacements, U, V, W, and PI. So we will get the displacements from there. Thereafter, we can have the derivatives and all the displacements, strains, we can find from there, as well as the stresses okay so in plane strain and stresses we will get from there 
So these are the stresses. Here are the same stresses as shown. Similarly, this, these are the normalized displacements, okay, which are normalized with some material parameters. And then the results are plotted. Finally, it is the results plot. So now we will run the code and we will see the results. We will have three number of lamina and number of points, suppose 20 points we have given, height of the laminate 0 0.25, then the thickness of each lamina 0 0.25 divided by 3, 25 divided by 3, 0 0.25 divided by 3, 0. First lamina layer we have provided 0 degree, then we have given 90 degree to second layer, then third layer we have provided 0 degree because it is a cross ply laminate. Again, it is asking for the first layer 0 degree, second one 90 degree lamina orientation, and the third layer is 0 degree. Then it has plotted the results here. So, first of all, let's see. It is the W, which is the transverse displacement, and it is it is showing that the transverse displacement is varying through the thickness of the lamina. Okay, so before this, from the uh, reduced third order shear deformation theory and the first order shear deformation theory, whereas also from classical laminated plate theory, we have seen that the transverse displacement were constant, but this gives a better result that in uh, exact three-dimensional theory, the uh, transfer displacement is varying. So it is very close to the exact solutions. Now we will see this, which is the displacement, in-plane displacement along the y-axis. So it is also showing that how it's the warping is taking place. So it is also giving very good results and very close to the exact solutions and it is also close to the radius third order shear deformation theory with only four unknowns these results are there whereas in the radius third order shear deformation theory and first order shear deformation theory we were having five unknowns so with this four unknowns we are getting a very good results so this is the main advantage of using this quasi three dimensional theory so we can see from these results how good these conditions are and we can see this is the warping of the in-plane displacements of along the x-axis u bar. So it is showing how warping takes place in the laminate. And it is the in-plane shear stress sigma xy. Then it is the sigma zz. This is the sigma yy giving very good results. Then it is for the sigma xx. And this is the transfer shear stresses, sigma xz, from the constitutive equations. Just same like reduced third order shear deformation theory, it is also showing the jump at this interfaces and here at this interfaces. But from the exact three dimension theory, we know that this should not have any jump, but a continuous variation should be there. And here also we can see it is showing a jump at this level just like in the reduced third order shear deformation. So it gives very close results uh, to the reduced third order shear deformation theory, but it is better than that. And with only four unknowns, we are getting these results. So these are the advantage of the quasi three dimensional theory. So thank you. Thank you.